Yo, 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 what's good? And if you've been following from my previous episodes, welcome back. Now that we are good and beefy, it is time for the first gatekeeper, Margit. Margit is a literal and metaphorical gatekeeper, as many new players find him to be quite challenging, and he is required in order to progress the early game story. Fear not, the Margit fight is actually quite a simple tank and spank, and if you've been following along from my previous episodes, you will be more than strong enough to handle him. First off, we should summon Roger using the golden summoning sign right outside the boss fight. Once inside the boss arena, we can also use our skeletal militiaman spirit summit that we got last episode. This will give us three allies to basically tank the Margit fight. The cherry on top of all of this is the skeletons have the passive of those that live in death, so if they die, they can respawn indefinitely if their bones aren't damaged during respawn. This makes it so that we have a potentially endless army of allies to tank Margate for once. Once our allies have Margate's attention, we can create some distance between us and Margate and just spam Rock Sling until Margate is poised, broken, and vulnerable to a critical hit. If we draw Margate's attention, we can just dodge away until our allies take aggro. It's as simple as that, and in all honesty, Margate is probably the hardest encounter in Stormvale Keep. Progressing through the keep, we will arrive at the final boss, Godric the Grafted. Godric is quite a pathetic boss and is basically an easier version of the Margit tank and spank strategy. Just summon the skeletal militiamen to draw Godric's attention, create some space, spam rock sling until poise break, go for the crit, repeat until dead. Godric does have a second phase where he grafts a dragon head that breathes fire at us, but if we create sufficient space, the move is easy to dodge. Godric will be the first boss that drops a great rune for us. This is a main story item, and it is our cue to head to the round table hold to progress the main story. At the hold, talk to Enya, who is in the room with the two fingers. The door to the two fingers will only open after getting our first great rune. Talking to Enya will progress our main story. Also be sure to talk to Roger, as he will gift us a really useful sword, Roger's Rapier. It is upgraded to plus 8, and it has the Glint Blade Phalanx Ash of War on it. Using the Ash of War with Rock Sling is a very solid strategy, if you don't enjoy using the Moonveil Katana we got last episode. The Ash of War and the Rock Sling both do a lot of health and poise damage, so in addition to the crazy burst, you will likely break the enemy's poise, opening them up for an easy critical hit. We should now head back to Godric the Grafted's Sight of Grace and head into the throne room. Head deeper into the throne room until we find a ladder. Descend the ladder and loot the Shabribri grape in the back of the room. Exit the throne room from the rear door into the second early game zone, Liurnia of the Lakes. At the Sight of Grace, we should encounter Bok, the seamster, and Hayata. You might recognize Hayata as Irena from last episode. Hayata is Irena's corpse, possessed by the frenzied flame after her death near Castle Lorn in Limgrave. Give Hayata the Shabribi grape and exhaust both of their dialogues. Continuing on, we should see a nearby church, and inside that church, we should speak to a sorcerer named Thop to begin his quest. Don't forget to exhaust all NPC dialogues. After the church, we can head towards the graveyard to get the academy scroll. Afterwards, heading down the hill until we reach the Laernia Lakeshore Site of Grace. At this Site of Grace, we will find a merchant who will sell us the lantern. The lantern is essentially a more practical torch. It will provide light in dark places without using a weapon slot. Next, we should head to the Putrefied Ruins to once again find Hayata. Hayata will once again ask us for a Shabribri Grape, which we can find in the nearby camp. Get the Shabribri Grape and return it to her. After giving the Shabribri Grape to Hayata, we will be able to head to the Putrefied Ruins Waygate, which is located just west of the Liurnia Highway north site of Grace. Using this Waygate will teleport us to the entrance of the Raya Lecuria Academy. We will find a site of grace and a map near the locked academy gate. The map shows us where to find the key to enter the academy. This is important because the academy is where we will find our second great rune. But for now, we will continue to explore the Laernia of the Lakes. 
Returning to the Laernia Lake shore site of Grace, we will once again head north until we find Raya in the ruin next to the telescope. Raya will ask us to return a necklace to her. This necklace can be found nearby to the west of the Boil Prawn Shack site of Grace, sold by Blackguard Big Boggart. We will buy the necklace from Blackguard Big Boggart and buy one of his prawns. We will then return the necklace to Raya, who is still near the telescope. Raya's quest will be useful in the mid-game, as Raya will teleport us to the Volcano Manor as a reward for helping her retrieve her necklace. We should now head to the village of Albinorix and look for Albus, who is disguised as a pot. Hitting the pot will reveal Albus, and after talking to him, he will reward us with the Halig Tree Secret Medallion right half. This will be important for the late game. Continuing west past the village of the Albinorix, we will find the converted tower and its site of grace. If we climb up the tower wall and jump onto the balcony, we can reach the top of the tower to find a memory stone in a chest. Memory stones increase the number of spell slots we have. Continuing north along the west side of the lake, we will encounter the Revenger's shack. At the shack, we will be invaded by Erina's father, Edgar the Revenger, who we spoke to last episode at the Castle Morn in Limgrave. Edgar is stricken with madness over Erina's death and will drop a Shabriwi grape upon defeat. We can take the Shabriwi grape to Hayeta near the Gate Town Bridge site of Grace in East Lyernia. After giving the Shabriwi grape to Hayeta, she will ask us what the grapes are, and we should tell her that they are eyeballs. After exhausting Hayeta's dialogue, we should rest at the nearby site of Grace and return to her, again exhausting her dialogue. We should now continue north along the east side of the lake until we reach the Church of Vows. At the church, we should talk to the Turtle Pope to learn a lot of game lore, give him the Academy spellbook we found at the graveyard, and learn all of his spells. We should also collect the golden tailoring tools from the chest in the back of the church. After our visit to the Church of Vows, we should continue heading north along the east side of the lake until we reach the Minor Erd Tree. There we will need to defeat the Erdtree Avatar to get the magic shrouding cracked tier for our Flask of Wondrous Physic. The tier increases the damage of our magic attacks by 20% for 3 minutes. Don't make the mistake I used to make by forgetting to use the Flask of Wondrous Physic. The 3 minute duration should usually be enough to clear from one side of grace to another, meaning we don't need to only save it for boss fights. If we can one-shot trash mobs, then we can save FP by needing fewer spells and enemies can't kill us if we one-shot them first. Just like with Margit and Godric, we should use the tank and spank strategy with our skeletal militiamen. Take note that the Erdtree avatar uses a fairly annoying spell that shoots a bunch of golden projectiles at us. We can encounter this spell by using the Eternal Darkness spell. Eternal Darkness basically conjures a black sphere that attracts hostile spells into an orbit around it. Eternal Darkness can be found in Kaelid, in the Swamp Lookout Tower. In order to find the Swamp Lookout Tower, first travel to the Fort Farath site of Grace we discovered in an earlier episode and head southwest towards the Church of the Plague. Continuing southwest from the Church of Plague until we cross the Celia Gateway Bridge, being careful to avoid the ambush. We can finally head up the hill to find the Swamp Lookout Tower and the Eternal Darkness Sorcery. Back on the west side of the lake, we can continue north from the Revenger's Shack site of Grace until we encounter Cuckoo's Everjail. Entering the Everjail and defeating the boss will reward us with the Great Blade Phalanx Sorcery. It is a lot like the Glimp Blade Phalanx, only it costs more FP and does more poise damage. As such, it is useful for stance breaking and landing critical hits, but for now it uses too much FP and will come in handy late game when our FP pool is bigger. Continuing north along the west side of the lake, we will come across a caravan. Defeat the trolls pulling the caravan and loot the chest in the back. This will reward us with the Carrion Knight Sword. It is a powerful astrologer's sword with the Carrion Grander Ash of War that allows us to charge up a magical great sword to inflict massive damage on enemies. I personally prefer Roger's Rapier and Moonveil Katana because the Carrion Knight Sword feels a bit unwieldy to me, but it's your preference at the end of the day. We can then head back into the lake towards Tetsu's Rise. Tetsu's Rise is another sealed mage tower like the one in Limgrave from an earlier episode. To break the seal, we will need to kill three turtles and we will find another memory stone at the top of the tower. Continuing north from Tetsu's Rise, we will find a path along the base of the cliff. 
Following this path and avoiding the creepy hand enemies, we can find the intelligent knot crystal tier. This is another tier for our flask of wondrous physic and it increases our intellect by 10 for 3 minutes. Please note that the soft cap for intelligence is 80, so we will want to keep putting our points into intelligence until we have 67 intelligence. Yes, 67. It will make sense when we find some gear in the near future. That way we won't go past the soft cap. Up until now we have been dumping essentially all of our points into intelligence, which is okay because high intelligence makes us do fat magic damage and the early game enemies don't do that much damage. However, as we start to approach the mid game, we will need to be putting more points into Vigor, the health stat. This will ensure that we don't get one shot by everything in the mid game. To summarize, the goal at this point is to get 67 intelligence. Then after getting 67 intelligence, we will look to get 40 points in Vigor. Continuing north on the west side of the lake, this time along the top of the cliff, we will encounter War Counselor E.G. He is found behind an illusionary wall beside the road to the manor site of Grace. E.G. is a blacksmith and sells somber smithing stones. We can use these smithing stones to upgrade our Moonvale Katana and carry a Night Sword to plus 5. This is a respectable upgrade level at this point in the game, so our swords will do very reasonable damage. Please note that the Meteorite Staff cannot be upgraded. After upgrading our weapons, we can proceed further north toward Carrion Manor, making sure to avoid the magical traps raining from the sky. At Carrion Manor, there is a lot of astrologer goodies to collect, but what we are after is Loretta's Great Bow Sorcery. The spell is dropped by the final boss of Carrion Manor, Royal Knight Loretta, upon defeat. Loretta is once again a really easy tank and spank. Loretta is actually really bad at killing our skeletal militiamen when they are reviving due to her lack of AoE damage. As such, our militiamen will keep on reviving when killed, effectively holding all of her attention and soaking up all of her damage. We simply need to stand back and spam Roxling until we get paid. Loretta's Great Bow Sorcery is basically our long range default spell until late game. It can hit enemies from essentially max lock on range and it can be charged for more damage. After defeating Royal Knight Loretta, we should head out through the gates past the dragon and into Rani's Rise. Traveling to the top of the tower, we will find the witch Rani, and exhausting her dialogue will begin her quest. Talk to her friends at the bottom of the tower, exhausting their dialogue, then return to Rani at the top of the tower and once again exhaust her dialogue. We can then head outside to find the dragon still hanging around, so as with all dragons, we should aim for its head and bonk it with Roxling. Once the dragon's health gets low enough, it will fly away in fear. We can then proceed to Celevis's Rise to talk to Celevis to begin his quest, and at the top of Celevis's Rise, we will find another memory stone. With Carrion Manor behind us, we will need to travel to the Academy Crystal Cave to the east of Cuckoo's Everjail. We will need a stone sword key to access the cave, and upon traveling to the boss room, we will need to defeat the Crystallian Duo boss. Please note that the Crystallians are quite tanky before we poise break, so until their poise is broken, we won't do any meaningful damage. After their poise is broken, they are incredibly vulnerable. This is a duo boss, so it will be a bit more difficult than the ones we faced before. So again, we will employ the old reliable tank and spank technique and focus the Crystallians down one at a time. Roxling is very effective at breaking their poise, so we will simply spam Roxling while trying not to get hit. After the Crystallian boss duo, we will take the elevator in the back boss room up to the top of the tower to find the Terra Magica spell. The Terra Magica is a core spell. It creates a blue zone on the ground beneath our feet, and when we stand inside of it, our magic damage is buffed by 35%. This is great to use at the start of combat in conjunction with our Flask of Wondrous Physic for setting up a massive long-range burst attack. At this point, we are just about ready to proceed to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. However, we still don't have the key to open the gates to the Academy. Well, fortunately for us, just west of the Academy Crystal Cave, we can find the Academy Glintstone Key being guarded by a dragon. We can either run past the dragon and take the key, or fight the dragon. If we choose to fight the dragon, remember that the head is the dragon's weak spot. Bonk the dragon's head with Rock Sling and stab it in the eye for a critical hit when its poise is broken. With the Academy Glintstone key in hand and a greatly expanded arsenal, we are now ready to take on the Academy of Raya Lucaria, but that is a mission for another video. 
Peace, guys.